Mm. Then you have to make me the host again. <laughs> okay, I will. Okay, hello everybody, and welcome to our second part series of Get Ready at Your Career from Singapore, collaborating with the BBA Career Centre. My name is Joyce, the Country Manager for ADEC Singapore. Uh, together with my colleagues uh, Mariva, Gagana and Carol from the Career Centre joining me. So today we are very happy and honoured to have our friend of ADEC, Joe Escobedo, to join, to share with us about uh, CV and personal branding and how to stand out from the crowd. Joe is a CEO from Esco Media and he's the author of Asian Growth Stories. He has advised and trained over 12,000 executives from around the world from countless Fortune 1000 brands on building brands and growing revenue through digital. He has been a contributor for Forbes, Inc, HuffPost and other top tier media, and his articles have garnered over 1 million views. He is a digital marketing and social media marketing lecturer for the world's uh, top ranked universities, including ESSEC. He has received an award for the most influential, sorry, let me see this. Most influential global marketing leader at the World Marketing mm -hmm. Congress in 2017 and was the number one speaker at the 2018 ASEAN CMO Conference. In this session, you will hear about, his, uh, mm -hmm. uh, about your personal content on uh, social platforms and how to be noticed by hires and recruiters. So before we start, uh, please note that we will record the session, so please put yourselves on mute. Uh, do use the chat room if you have any questions and we will answer them at the end of the session. So thank you and now hand the mic over to you, Joe. Wonderful. While you're giving me access, I just want to say thank you guys so much. Good morning, good afternoon, no matter where you're watching this from. Really appreciate you joining us here today. And as Joyce mentioned, we want to make this session as practical as possible. So one of the topics we're talking about today is how do you stand out? So if you stay here until the end of the session, we're going to be looking at some of your own content. I'll be providing some feedback. But until then, let me go ahead and Joyce, you can give me it. All yes. right, let's see. I'll go ahead and let the other 10 participants in here. All right, wonderful. Like I said, today we're talking about how to stand out from the crowd. Now, as you can imagine, there has never been four people applying for jobs with COVID and the economic downturn. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's extremely important that you make sure that you're standing out, you're positioning yourself in the right place. No worries. I'm just going to mute everyone for now. Um, but like I said, I'm going to mute you. But if you have any questions or comments, please put it in the chat. I would love to hear from you guys. All right, I'm not gonna go through my intro because Joyce already went through a very long <laughs> intro. I had to shorten that actually. Um, but quick caveat, if you have any questions or comments, connect with me on LinkedIn, post this. So why is it important, I talked about earlier, that you are standing out from the crowd? Well, if you do a quick search on LinkedIn for the keyword opportunities, career opportunities, job opportunities, you can see there's 5.3 million people um, looking for a job just on LinkedIn alone. So you can imagine for the people who aren't looking at that particular keyword, how competitive it is right now. So really, it is a fight. And one of the things we're going to talk about today is how we can set you up for success so you're actually you know, winning the fight. Now, let me know in the chat. Let me pull up the chat real quick. And I would love to hear your thoughts. I've hired hundreds of people over my career. What is one thing that I look for when hiring? And hint, it's not your resume or your CV anymore. Let me know in the chat. Let me see if I can find the chat real quick. And I would love to get your guys' thoughts. What is one thing that I look at when I'm hiring for new, new roles these days? Personality. Um, Elliot, I think with your, your background, I think it definitely demonstrates your personality. Yes fit within the company culture? Yeah, absolutely. But before, even before I, but even before, yes, skills, but even before I, you know, um, interview someone, how do I determine whether or not I want to um, meet that person? Chloe's, Chloe's on the right track, social media, their LinkedIn profile. Yes, you guys are getting hotter, getting hotter. 
you guys are absolutely right. I look at your social media profiles. I look at your LinkedIn profile. This gives me a good context in terms of how you position yourself, how well you communicate, how well you communicate with others. So it really gives me a good sense of whether or not I even want to be kind to, um, to hire you. So you guys are absolutely right. Um, LinkedIn profiles have become the new resume. That's why it's extremely important that yours is up to date and it positions you in the right light. Now let's say, Joe, I'm brand new to this. Where do I go for inspiration? So I wanna give you some, some ideas just to get started off with. But I think a great place to start is to look at LinkedIn's campus editors. So LinkedIn has what they call campus editors, which are essentially students like yourself who are very active on the platform. They are actively contributing content, sharing their ideas, their research, and so on. So LinkedIn actually publishes a list of this every year. So you can check out some of their profiles and understand what are some of the things they're doing. It's not about copying and pasting, but it's about understanding what are some of the things that are working for them and then getting inspiration from it. So I'll share a couple of examples in a little bit, but this is a very, they have a very exhaustive list in terms of where, um, you know, the campus editors, uh, list of campus editors. Now I want to talk about three quick ways in which you can stand out. The first of which is obviously creating relevant content. And a lot of the place where you're placing that is on social media, your LinkedIn profiles. So obviously you want to make sure that it's relevant to your future job. This is extremely important because one thing I see a big gap is people are creating content just for the sake of it and content that is relevant to their future employer, their future industry. So this is a brilliant example of a gentleman who is a digital marketing strategy. Um, he's uh, a master's degree. So he is contributing content around LinkedIn personal branding because he knows that that's relevant to his audience. And also, you know, if I'm an, an employer and I'm looking for, you know, a digital marketing person, this is always one of the big gripes hiring managers have is that, you know, uh, a lot of interns who are coming out of university, they do not have the relevant experience. So I think it's maybe not that they don't have the relevant experience, it's that they're not showcasing it in the right way. So let me know, I, I think a lot of times it's fear. Let me know if you guys have had any internships. Let me know in the chat whether or not you've had any internships in the past. I think I've had, all right. Wonderful. All right. So it looks like most of you have had some kind of internships. And I think this is a great place to start because a lot of times we're, we're you know, the biggest obstacle to overcome is fear. We say, look, Joe, we're just starting out. I don't have enough experience. This is always a big, you know, um, pushback I hear when I'm trying to encourage younger folks like yourself to start publishing content. But it looks like most of you have had internships. So it sounds like you have some experience in the field. I think it's not necessarily, you know, people don't have extremely high expectations. It's about sharing your experience, what you learn, what were some of the things that others could apply in the space. So it doesn't matter if you're in digital marketing or you're in finance or you're in operations or supply chain. I think taking some bits of applicable experience from your internships, sharing those learnings, whether it is through, you know, social post or a video or a blog, doesn't really matter as long as it is relevant to your particular industry that you're looking to get into. And you know, in terms of format, people always ask me, which format should I be using? I say, use whatever format you feel more comfortable with. So if you are a natural speaker and you feel more comfortable doing it that way, then record yourself just doing a video. You can use a tool like uh, Clipomatic, which is an app that allows you to um, get real-time real -time captions. So you can and record myself and it'll automatically transcribe um, you know my, my voice in the moment so really it doesn't really matter which format you're using use a format that you feel most comfortable with so once again this is a great example of someone who has a digital marketing background this is a hack that LinkedIn has recently introduced is featuring your content so feature your best content because this is like something that's gonna really show up prominently on your LinkedIn profiles so let me know if you guys have seen, and let me know if you guys are featuring any content currently on your LinkedIn profile. And if not, okay, cool. Salome is, anyone else featuring content on their profile? If not, I can share the link 
after this with Joyce, and then you guys can get that in terms of how to really feature the content. So if it's a similar, if you're on Twitter, if you're on Facebook and you actually pin the post, it'll show up more prominently in your profile. So this gentleman has a really good example. He's one of the um, LinkedIn career voices. So he has you know, a video of him giving the valedictorian speech at his university. He's got um, you know, him doing a short article that he did about his experience. He's got his learnings from an event he um, participated with at HSBC. So as you can see, it's not rocket science. It's stuff that he's already doing. He's just taking the opportunity to pin it to his um, profile, and therefore it shows more prominently. If I'm looking at this person for a potential role, you know, at this pops out and it stands out to me. So once again, you can mix and match, you can you know, move things around, depending on what you think is the biggest, um, make it biggest impact in your future employer. Or it could be simply be a post you wrote. So in this case, it's simply a post he wrote with an image. You can pin that as well. So featuring is a great way to really stand out in the feed. This is another one, and I think this is one of my big pet peeves when it comes to you know, hiring a lot of people, is how many of you, and I'm sure a lot of you are very smart, but I just want to get your thoughts. How many of you are sending thank you letters after you've had an intern, uh, a meeting with uh, you know, a potential employer, recruiter, hiring manager, just anyone? How many of you are sending um, the thank you letters or thank you emails? Let me know in the chat. Always, all right, Julietta. All right, well, you guys are already on. Okay, beautiful. It sounds like most of you are already doing that already. That's usually the first step. The reason I bring that up is because most people don't, and you would be surprised, I, out of the hundreds of people I've interviewed, only maybe less than 10% will actually do that. And once again, it, it makes you stand out because a lot of people are not doing it. Now, in addition to what, you know, the follow-up email, you could say, you know, thank you so much for, um, you know, taking your time, really appreciate it. Here's some of the key learnings that I took away from our, our lesson. Another thing you can do is um, share some relevant content. So I'll give you a very timely example. I was just on a call with a client about 20 minutes ago, and we were talking about a podcast interview that we we're going to shoot. And during the, during the discussion, she mentioned that she loves cooking and that she's doing a series of cooking videos, but she doesn't know where to start. So what I did is I quickly took a, um, I did a search on YouTube, how to cook, uh, how to shoot cooking, you know, recipes with your phone, sent that link to her. And she was so thrilled. She was so happy um, that I had did that because that was something that she was looking to do and didn't know how to do it. So I think it's a great example of, you know, taking some insights from the conversation and applying some kind of resource. It could be something you did, or it could be something that you found on the net. Um, it really goes a long way in terms of showcasing that you care and you're actually listening to their person. So that's something that I tried and uh, it works out very, very well. All right, the second thing you wanna be doing is highlighting your side projects. Now, everyone should be having side projects because this is where the, the power of the portfolio comes in. Um, so let me know, this gentleman here is in the finance space. He has developed his own simple website. So it has the, you know, the homepage, more about him, his resume, um, his take, which is his blog, and then his sharing, so any research reports he's done. So once again, it doesn't have to be super sophisticated. This is something very simple. It can be done in, in Word space or, or sorry, uh, yeah, Squarespace or any other platform. Let me know if you have any side projects that you're working on. It could be a blog. It could be um, a video series that you're doing. It could be you know, um, any research reports you're doing on the side for fun for some of you. Let me know in the chat. Does anyone have any side projects? All right, Commence does. Do the thesis count? You could potentially take the thesis. That's a very good question. So if you're writing a thesis, um, I guess the question is, how do you make it more palatable? because you can't expect your hiring manager or recruiter to read your entire thesis. They just won't. So even taking it and breaking it down into an infographic, you can use tools like Canva to convert your you know, 20 to 30 page thesis into a bite-sized infographic and says, okay, here are some of the key points and here's why I think it's relevant 
to your organization. All of these things can be very, very helpful. The more visual, the better. So yes, if you have a thesis or you are doing some kind of paper or you're doing some kind of work for your internship, all of that documented that things, helping a friend with a business, beautiful. I think that's great because this is what, once again, this is a big gripe that a lot of hiring managers have is you don't have an experience. But it sounds like if you guys are being proactive, you're helping friends, then you can not only show you know, the screenshots of the blog you created or the Facebook ad you created or a financial report that you created. Whatever it is, you can showcase that um, in your portfolio. And if you have results, if you can say, you know, you increased, you know, uh, sales by 30% or you helped get this many people sign up for an event, all of that makes a huge impact. So when you're trying to build your portfolio, you have to strike the balance between both sides, the rational and then kind of the creative side. So for the, you know, rational, logical side, you need to showcase numbers. So it could be, you know, your GPA, but I think more than that, people are looking for what have you actually done in your internships? What was the impact that you had? And that's why I always recommend, whether it's your LinkedIn profile or it's your resume, make sure you have numbers to back it up. So it's not enough to say, look, I created a, um, a marketing strategy or I created a um, operational plan. It's not enough anymore. You have to have numbers to substantiate it. That's what really helps you stand out. And then once again, if you have any screenshots of anything you worked on, putting that in a simple PowerPoint presentation, no more than 10 slides, is an excellent way for you to showcase your work. But two tips I would say is make it visual, so have screenshots or some kind of graphics, and two, try to include numbers in there. <coughs> All right, yeah, Elliot asked a very good question. And if you don't have specific numbers because the strategy hasn't been implemented yet, um, that's a very good question. I would always go ahead and follow up. So for example, let's say you worked on something during your internship and it was a strategy, but it wasn't implemented yet. I would go back to the person I was working for at the company and say, look, um, I'm applying for jobs. I would love to, to find out, you know, what were some of the results of what we were working on, you know, positive or negative. It would be great for me, um, you know, definitely help my learning and growth development. So even if you don't have the numbers yet there yet, I would go ahead and follow up with some of your previous managers and ask them, you know, what were the results like? Most of the time, they're going to be happy to do that. And so when you do that, then you can actually showcase the numbers that you've been working on. But very good question, Elliot. I'm going to take a pause. Any other questions? That's a really good question. All right, perfect. The third one is not necessarily around content, but I think it's extremely important and not enough people really do it, is connecting with hiring managers and recruiters. So I can tell you from experience, I'm a little bit older than you guys, as you can tell by the gray hair. Um, so I can tell you that nearly every single, actually every single one of my jobs that I've ever gotten in my career, now my clients, has not necessarily gotten from me applying for a job. Because now I think it's super competitive and actually machines are scrolling through a lot of your resumes to finding the keywords. One thing that has always helped me throughout my career is actually networking and building relationships with people. And let's say that um, you are an introvert like me. It's still possible to do it. And I think, uh, I'm in trouble pronouncing the name, but it says, would you recommend reaching out to associates or people in senior positions? So once again, if you're introvert to me, it's very easy for you to connect with fellow associates because you're usually at the same level. You can converse with each other a little bit easier. So if you're trying to build up your, your confidence, I would start there. But another thing that I would do, and I'll probably share this in a couple of steps, is to speak with people. It doesn't necessarily have to be a senior position. Like I'm not saying you have to go after the president of Kimberly Clark, for example, or LV but find out who the hiring manager is. That is the key. So the hiring manager in your case could be a marketing director or a supply chain director, whatever it is. It's generally not gonna be you know, the VP or the president and CMO. Um, so it's about finding the right senior seniority. So in your case, I imagine uh, a manager or a director would probably be the ones interviewing you and hiring you. So I would probably stick to those two tiers. I probably wouldn't 
bump up any more than that because those people are generally not involved in you know, um, you know new new starters like yourself. But very good question. And I'll share a, a quick example in terms of how you do that in a bit. But let me know once again. Would love to hear your guys' thoughts. Are you currently connecting with hiring managers or recruiters at your dream companies on social media? All right, perfect. Got some good questions in here. Okay, if it's a big company with job postings who are quite general, how can you find the hiring manager? So sometimes they'll include it in the role itself. Sometimes, like I said, I would go back and I would literally go into LinkedIn in the search bar up here, and I would type in, let's say, you know, what role are you going after? Is it an operations role? Is it a supply chain role? Is it a digital marketing role? I would find out, um, ideally, the company, depending on the size of the company, I would put in uh, the company's name, the, uh, the title, so one up, it could be marketing director, for example, and then I would put in the specific business unit or geography. Try to make it as specific as possible. And then that, and at that time, LinkedIn will give you a pretty concise list. And then from there, you can, you know, you may not have the exact um, person, but you could say, you know what, look, I just found this very interesting role. Um, you know, is this, is this in your department? And they can say, no, 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 that's in my friend, that's in my colleague Sarah's department. You should speak with her. So that is one way of doing it: is putting together a list uh, based on the criteria of, uh, you know, the company, the geography. Um, the business unit, if it's that big, and also the uh, the title. So one up. So for example, if you're going after a marketing role or a sales role, who is a director in that specific department within that organization? But very good question though. How should the me message be formulated so it doesn't sound like you only want something back from him and not anything to give back? That is a brilliant question. And that's why I'm gonna show you in a little bit why you should never ask for the job. It sounds crazy, but by not asking for the job, you could actually be given the job. Um, yes, using hiring managers are not open for chats. They would direct you for yes. Yes, so if you go about it the, the, the direct way and you say, hey, I'm interested in you know, a job, chances are they're not gonna be too inclined. But I'm gonna share a hack here in a little bit that has worked 90% of the time for me. Um, uh, okay, sorry. This is the, the criteria that I was looking for as well. Um, another thing that I didn't mention when, you, when you're building your network is also look at you know, the alumni. And Joyce, because you know, we have some alumni here today. Connect with them. That's what I did when I was in Singapore and no one wanted to hire me. I didn't have any Southeast Asia experience. I was coming from China, which had a very bad stigma at the time. So what I did is I went to LinkedIn and I went to you know, the same university. Who was the alumni? And you'd be surprised, they were far more inclined. So anyone from an ed tech background, uh, particularly in the business school, is gonna be far more inclined to get in touch with you. So that's something that I, that I worked for me very well. When I just moved to Singapore, I had zero contacts, um, had zero experience in the region. And that, that's something that really helped build my, uh, my network. So obviously you can sort this by you know, geography, whether it's in Singapore, or I'm looking for a job in San Fran, or you know, India, for example this alumni search can be very, very powerful. So going back to you guys with your question, yes, most hiring managers will not speak with you if your sole intention is just to ask them for a job. They don't have time for that. So there is a brilliant book, which I think all of you, you guys can read. I don't think I have it on my stand right now, but it's How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It is, I've read the book about 15 times already. It's the only book I've read that, that many times. How to Win Friends and Influence People. And one of the things that tells you in the book is that people are interested in you when you're interested in them. Let me repeat that. People are interested in you when you're interested in them. And it makes sense, right? If someone, just imagine, if you are on Instagram, you're on Facebook, and someone you don't know is constantly you know, commenting, engaging, complimenting your post, isn't that person gonna stand out in your mind? So the same thing applies to hiring managers um, or recruiters. The more you can go in and, for example, in this case, this gentleman 
uh, want to get a job at Facebook. So he followed the um, talent sourcing manager and he wrote this, you know, message. Yes. Thank you, Joyce. He wrote this message. And once again, it's going to stand out because you can see 68 people liked it, but only eight people commented on it. So once again, if I am Andrea and I'm going through my feed and I'm saying, okay, I just posted this, um, you know, the comments is something I'm going to look at first because once again, it's standing out. Smaller amount of people are doing it. And it's something insightful. I think this is something, a caveat that I wanted to share with you guys is what I mean comment on people's posts, you know, hiring managed posts, it's not like great job or that's great. I think that's very like, you know, surface level, it's not really gonna help you stand out. But I think asking insightful questions or adding on to the commentary like this gentleman has is a great way to spark the conversation and really stand out. So this is the, the first way, um, is really following the people that you want to work for, whether it's company or it's the hiring manager themselves, and then engaging with their posts, like it, comment, share on it. That way you capture their attention. So I think of it, if you're any boxers here, it's the jab, jab, hook approach. So jab softens it up. So it could be you, you know, sharing one of their posts or you commenting on it with an insightful um, question. And then the hook comes in a little bit. Apologies for the violets, guys, but uh, hopefully the analogy makes sense in a little bit. So jab, jab with a comment um, or sharing their post. Sorry. Um, and this is where the hook comes in. We talked about the jab, jab, which is here, capture their attention. And then once you see them checking your profile or you see them, you know, liking your comment, this is something that I've done and it's worked extremely well for me. And I think it works even better for you guys is to interview them. So start your own blog series, start your own podcast, start whatever you want. Um, start your own series and interview hiring managers in your particular space. 90% of the time, people will say yes. I think I've only gotten rejected. We've done 45 episodes, so I run a podcast, and only one person has said no, and that's because the company, you know, corporate rejected it. But otherwise, everyone's like, yes, absolutely. And so in my case, I've interviewed presidents of companies, CEOs, uh, marketing directors, CMOs, and it's a great way to build a relationship with them. And also, you get to find out more about them. What are they interested in them? What are the challenges in their space? So once again, if let's say I've never met this person, this is someone I've connected with for a long time on LinkedIn. We've never met, but she's liked my post. I've liked some of her posts. And you know, this is having happened last week. I said, look, uh, I've obviously been following you for a while on LinkedIn. I would love to interview in my podcast so you can talk about your experiences um, and your learnings. And you can see all the people who have been featured here. This is only a small snippet of it. But it works out so, many be so much better than you reaching out to this person and saying, hi, I saw you're hiring this role. I would like to apply for it or I am interested. Like, which one do you think is going to make a, a bigger impact? Going back to what I was saying of being interested in your person. You taking the direct approach and saying, hi, I'm interested in joining your company. No one cares. No one cares. People care about themselves. It sounds very egotistical and selfish, but the most important person we think about all the time is ourselves, how we are feeling, how we are, you know, our struggles, our trials and tribulations. And you'd be surprised at how many people actually enjoy talking about themselves. So I have done, I think, I don't know, 40 or 50 podcast interviews myself, and I rarely ever turn them down. I rarely ever turn them down. Not because I enjoy talking about myself, but I enjoy sharing my experiences. Just like today, I went through it the very hard way. So when I moved to Singapore, no one wanted to hire me. Like I said, I had no experience. No one wanted to meet with me. So I really want to take this opportunity for you guys and share some of the key learnings. Um, if it's short term, could we reach out to them, not directly saying I'm interested in your company, but asking for tips and experiences with that work? Um, yes, but I think, once again, I think it's the way you position it. So I think by having a series, it makes a huge difference. So if you just have one, um, they're going to they're gonna know. But if you say, hi, um, hi, Joyce, um, every week I interview, um, you know, education leaders 
to talk about you know career advancement and placement and so on. I would love to have you on the series. Um, is that something you're interested in? So once again, it's a very different way of asking it versus me saying, hey, can I pick your brain? Because I think a lot of executives, myself included, I do it quite a lot, but I, I, don't, I don't like the way it's positioned. So I think by having a series, and you can come up with a, you know, a special name like the, the uh, Marketing Leaders in France podcast or blog series, whatever, whatever you feel more comfortable doing, I think having a name to it, making it feel a bit more tangible um, is a better way than saying, hi, can I have 15 minutes of your time so I get your tips and experience? Um, sometimes they'll say yes, sometimes they'll say no, but it's, it's a bit riskier rather than starting a series. And even if they don't hire you, I think it's a great way because they may be like, you know what, I met Salomon and you know what, she's not a fit for my company, but I would like to introduce you to my friend who works at this company. So you'd be surprised at how many more doors it opens by doing the series. Hopefully it helps answer it then. You guys got some good questions though, keep me on my toes here late in this afternoon. Um, so once again, the might be question is, Joe, does this really work? And the short answer is yes. So once again, I'll quickly share my experience. Um, as I mentioned before, I was coming, I came from Singapore about six years ago. No one wanted to hire me. I was getting rejected all the time. Uh, but I finally got one job in an interview at a major hotel chain. And I asked, I came up to the interview and I brought an iPad. And I had like, I was flipping through the slides that were my previous projects. So I said, okay, here's a website that I helped develop or here's a press release that I worked on and here's the results. So I was taking through um, the hiring manager, the entire presentation on my little PowerPoint. You could have a notepad or whatever works for you, you can be your laptop. And it was a super competitive role. I mean, everyone was applying for it, very cushy. And I asked the hiring manager afterwards, I said, why did you pick me? I have no experience. Um, you know what, I'm not a fit in terms of like the background, in terms of the industry, why did you pick me? And she looked at me and she said, Joe, the reason I picked you is because you had a very strong portfolio. No one else in the hiring process came in with that. No one else kind of illustrated what they did. There was very much the usual, you know, tell me about yourself and so on. But you came in prepared. You had, you know, a well thought out uh, portfolio and it helped you, you know, I remembered you and when I was speaking to my colleagues, that was one thing that stood out. So once again, I was able to secure the job simply because I had did the research, but also once again, I had my little, I had my little iPad. Actually, with my wife's iPad, it was like falling apart. <laughs> so um, I took it, took, took it to the meeting. I was like, you no, know, flipping through the slides. And people are very visual. So by looking, I could tell, you, I could tell the person, look, I've worked on the website, or I could show them. I said, okay, here's the website I looked, I worked on. Here's my there's the copy I wrote, et cetera, et cetera. And once again, which one do you think is gonna have a bigger impact or make you more memorable? You telling about your experience or you showing it? So one of my big key lessons is show, don't tell. And I think a lot of what you saw today is in terms of visuals, in terms of graphics, in terms of just telling your story that way can really help you stand out um, from the pack. All right. So if there's no other questions, I would love to take the next 15 minutes or so just to give you feedback on any content you guys have done, whether it is a blog post or your LinkedIn profile or a website that you've built. Um, let me know if you're interested and I'm happy to spend the next 10, 10 minutes or so giving you guys feedback. So all you have to do if you're interested is just put the uh, URL in the uh, chat here. How do you show your presentation during an interview? So, very good question. In, in the case that I gave earlier, um, okay, oh, okay, how do you show it? Um, so I think it should happen, happen naturally. So for example, one of the questions is, you know, tell me about your internship at this company. That's a prime opportunity to say, okay, um, sure, I'm happy to tell you more. It would be okay if I take you through a very quick you know, presentation in terms of um, what I learned during that time and how it can be applicable to you. So it's a natural print progression of, of what you've, you've done in the conversation. 
Um, and usually, you know, they'll always ask you, what was your previous experience? Tell me more about you. Um, so there's always an opportunity for you to say, you know, I'd love to do that, but I also have prepared a very short presentation that I would love to take you through. Um, another thing that I've done, and this is because I've been a professor, but it just you guys could try it out as well, is let's say you don't have that mapped out. Let's say the company you're applying for, um, now it'd be a Zoom whiteboard, but doing Zoom whiteboards. So when this was a real life interview and in person, I would, you know, I would see a whiteboard and I'd say, excuse me, is it okay if I just take a whiteboard and just write down some, some recommendations that I have for the company? And no one's gonna say no. Um, if it's virtually, I would do the same thing. So I would say in Zoom here, let's see if I can share. If you're having the interview via Zoom, I would just showcase it here. So once again, what are some of the things that you need to have in your presentation? So we talked about, you know, slick cover slide, some visuals for the results, and then maybe just a simple with your contact details. No more than So something as simple as that. So once again, trying to make it more visual, trying to make it more interactive, and you're more likely to capture their attention. A very good question, guys. Let's see. Any other questions? Otherwise, I'm happy to take a look at your guys' content. Up to you. Joyce, do you have a question? <laughs> no, this is really interesting. I think some of them have some more questions coming up. All right. Yeah, let me know in the chat, guys, if you have any more questions. If you see any concerns or challenges, you guys have already addressed it, but let me know if there's anything else that you see as an obstacle, and we'll just address it together. All right. If there are, oops. Uh, oh, my ma. Ah, yes. Um, so it says, would you, be, would you prepare yourself to talk about yourself as well? Um, so I, I was like one of those people that was like super over prepared. Like I had every question mapped out. So if you can Google, you know, the top 50 interview questions and I had um, talking points for each question. So I was that well prepared for anything. But I think more than that, talk about the company, talk about the person. One thing that I did that worked out quite well, we're getting more in terms of the interview aspect, is I would flip it around. So instead of them interviewing me, I would interview the hiring manager. And I would say, uh, you know what, I saw a press release about the thing, you know, so-and-so. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts in terms of what are some of the challenges that you guys faced in, you know, putting the project together and what are you going to plan on doing sustaining? So I use this tactic is get them to talk more about themselves. Um, it sounds crazy, but once again, people like talking about themselves. Um, so that's something that I did in the past is make it about them and once again doing the research So for example, you can I'll share a quick hack right right now That I use Even to this day. So a lot of the principles and stuff that I used when I was looking for a job um, I still use today. So let's say so I'm back to share my screen Let's say I'm trying to get a job at LV they probably wouldn't hire me because I'm not very fashionable, but let's say, so I type in Google and I want to type in the past month. Okay. So once again, if I am meeting with someone at LV, I would say, uh, hi Joyce. Hey, I just saw the article that you guys are launching a, a $1,300 face shield. That's, that's wild. I, I love that it's so creative. It's, you know, thinking out of the box. Um, you know, wh what was the inspiration behind that? You know, how did you guys actually come up come up with such, such a thing get them thinking about it this takes literally you saw how fast I could do it is is 10 10 seconds I literally go in put the, the company name go to tools and I sort by past month and then I find out you know headlines I think I can talk about so yeah a lot of it's talking about you know let's say they launched a new shop at Marina Bay Sands which is the big shopping outlet here I would say oh you know I just 
saw you guys launch a new outlet here. Um, what are you guys doing prom to promote it? What are some of the things, some of the activities you guys have done? Um, you know, what are some of the ways you can um, build, you know, traction to the store? So I can look at the social media profiles so I can say, oh, you know what? I saw that um, this designer, this is one of my favorite designers too. I love jo Josh Smith. Uh, he's one of my favorite designers. I saw you guys are featuring him as well. So all these things can be great conversation starters. It already sounds like you're part of the company, which is the goal. If you can already sound like you're part of the company, you have a far more likely, um, higher likelihood of getting the job. So that's a very quick way to do research and get prepared for your upcoming interviews. Let's see. I think there's a couple more questions pouring in here. Um, all right. Some brave souls. Elliot, I knew you and your beautiful background would be brave enough. All right. So this, this is where I think the biggest impact when you're talking about LinkedIn profile is right here. I don't know if you can see this. It's the image, the background photo, and then your headline. So if I just see this, and let's say Elliot wants to connect with me, um, I would say in terms of the photo, I would just crop it and be a little bit tighter. Because if I'm looking at a mobile device, it's gonna be a little bit, I'm gonna see your head's gonna be like this. So people like to see faces. So if you can go a little bit tighter on the, the, the headshot, that'll make you stand out a bit more. I think in terms of the, the graphics, it's, it's background, it's fine. Um, it gives you an understanding in terms of where you're located. I think this is where I would probably, you know, improve. So once again, I would focus on who do you help and how do you help them? So if you think of, okay, you are in corporate development, leadership development, digital marketing, okay. Um, so I would put that here. I would put digital marketing um, executive interested in a role in blah. Or digital marketing executive who has helped, uh, you know, develop 40 plus meetings on tolerance, blah, 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 whatever it is. So think of your headline the same way you would think of an article. And this is something I picked up at Forbes. So, you know, Forbes is really good in terms of the headlines. Think about that is in terms of your headline as well. Because without a strong headline, no one's going to click your profile. No one's going to click your profile. They're not going to bother in and come in and check out the rest of this. So I think, once again, photo I think is fine. Um, background is fine. But I think this, I would focus on some of the keywords. I think we talk about this all day. I'm gonna try to pull out keywords that are relevant to you as well. So let's say that you are looking for um, corporate development role. I would put that keyword back into here because if I'm searching and I look for corporate development, it's gonna bring up relevant roles. Oops, good type. So not only putting kind of the keywords, but also maybe some kind of impact you've had. So once again, think of it as a public as a headline in any publication. All right, Juliet, same thing. Yes. All right. So I think once again, beautiful photo, very clear, very tight shot. Um, once again, nice, nice background. Same, same advice. So what is it that you are digital marketing? Okay, great. Okay, so you have some of the media here, which is fine. I would go ahead and feature it up here as well too, because sometimes people don't get this far down into the actual um, thing. They usually come up here, come here, look at your content and where you've been featured. So I'll give you a quick example in terms of mine so you can just actually see where it's at. Uh, 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 uh. Ah, okay, yeah, so I have two here. I have a uh, session of my previous trainings and I have kind of a portfolio here. So once again, this is where the featured uh, aspect comes into play. So once again, I would put digital marketing executive, um, driving leads for tech companies, for example, as your headline potentially, if that's um, what the, the, the industry and the, the role you're looking for. But I think this is great. I love that you've started putting it in there. Um, I would just tie it back into the headline itself. 
And Joyce, we could probably do an entire session on just LinkedIn profiles, but I think that this is the top three things I would focus on is your photo, your banner, as well as your headline. A um, couple of quick questions and we'll probably wrap it up. Would your boss also advise to add your CV on your LinkedIn profile in the future rubric? Um, or is your LinkedIn profile enough? I think your LinkedIn profile is probably enough. I would probably save the space and put, maybe add a snippet of my portfolio in here rather than the actual um, resume. Because it's, it's going to be pretty much the same for like a lot of you guys. So I wouldn't duplicate it. But good question. Um, would you recommend us to put the display open the work banner? Apparently the best way to push people for jobs is that they not looking for the job. Yeah, I think this is something they just introduced. Um, so if we go back to Elliot's, uh, sorry, Elliot. There's like this, you know, open for work. It, it really depends because I think that works if you are more in a senior role and recruiters are looking to hire you. Um, I think, you know, if, if you're not in a very senior role, I don't think it makes a huge difference. Um, yeah, because even for me, I like to hire people who are already employed. It sounds it sounds funny, but if you think about it, the dating analogy for a lot of you who are still dating, you you know when you see someone with with another person, you're like you're like, oh okay, that person seems a bit more attractive now versus like you know they're alone at, at the bar and stuff like that. So it sounds very shallow and very egotistical, but I think it does make a sense in terms of if people have already seen you, um, you know as you know on the market or at least an attractive candidate then it's going to make it um you know it's going to make you more attractive <laughs> hope that makes sense tonight that didn't come out right as a candidate it's, it's been a long day guys it's been a long day um awesome i'll probably answer one more question this context though today's contact does this still apply um I think it, it, it still does apply because I think nowadays everyone is doing it. Like I said, I, there's no wrong or right answer. I'm not saying just because you have it, you, people will not reach out to you. I don't think it's the case. I think it's my own personal preference that I wanted to share. Um, so with that, thank you guys so much. I'm going to go ahead and put a link to my LinkedIn profile. And if you guys have any further questions or comments, please feel free to connect with me. I'm happy to do that. Otherwise, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Joyce. Really appreciate you having me today. Hopefully it was helpful. Thank you, Rebecca. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, look forward to hearing more about your guys' growth and development. Awesome. Thank you guys. So much. All Appreciate right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Joe. And we hope that you have enjoyed the session. Uh, please do send us your feedback and comments. We will appreciate this and have a good day and hope to see you again. Good night. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.